In this exercise, we will slice this Photoshop document for use in a web page. The idea here is to design in Photoshop the look of the intended web page. Take that layered Photoshop document and slice it up into manageable image sizes and buttons to be used later in the construction of a web page. So why go through the hassle of slicing the page? Why not just make individual graphics? Two answers apply here. One, simplicity. It's much easier to design the page as a whole, then slice it up for the individual graphics. Two, continuity. It's much better to use the same master page to build not only the individual graphics for that one page, but also to build multiple pages. By breaking the document into smaller images, it makes it easier for the client to download the page. And lastly, by making individual buttons, we can link them to other web pages and create rollover states for each of those buttons. Open index.psd. Notice it's made up of five layer groups consisting of a header, navigation, body, sidebar, and footer, as well as the background layer. You can explore each of these groups on your own if you want, but I'm moving on. The slice tool hides behind the crop tool, so hit the C key to select it. If the crop tool shows up, hit Shift C to toggle over to the slice tool. The slice tool will allow us to cut up the image. Shift C again reveals the slice selection tool. This tool allows us to select portions that have already been sliced. There is an art to slicing up an image. I'll show you some tricks that I've learned as we move through this exercise. Make life easy by planning what you're going to do prior to doing it. First, let's break the document into major areas. Not layers, areas. In this example, we have four major areas. They are the header, navigation bar, body, and footer. For these major areas, I like to use guides. Turn on rulers by hitting Command R on the Mac and Control R on the PC. Drag down a guide close to the section border. The section border is the natural break in the layout. Don't spend too much time to get it perfect. Let's place one line between the header and nav bar, then one between the nav bar and body, and finally one between the body and footer. Now let's zoom in to make them perfect. Above the line or below the line, which is better? This is a personal choice. I like it below because we'll be using rollovers later and I like to replace as little as possible. So I'll place it below the line. Now move this one into place and move the bottom one into place as well. Done. We'll be using these guides to do the slicing for us. Don't pull guides from the side unless your page is set up more vertical than this one. If you do, there will be far too many slices. Now click Slices from Guides. We should have four slices so far. You can see the slice number displayed in the upper left of each slice. Now clear the guides. They have served their purpose. Normally, now people would go through the document and start making smaller slices. As many of you know, I'm not normal. Anyway, rather than doing it and regretting it later, let's name the major areas. Shift C to get the slice selection tool. Click in the header so it's selected, defined by this bounding box. Go up to this button and bring up the Edit Slices Option dialog box. By default, it's named Index 01. Change it to Index underscore header. Hit OK. Nothing seems to change. It did. We just don't see it yet. Now select the navigation bar and right click on it to bring up the edit slice options. Change it to index underscore nav. Now continue to rename the body and the footer. This just sets the document up for easier use later. Trust me. Determine how many slices you need. Some say between 20 to 30 per page. That's like saying you need two gallons of gas to get to work and back for a week. It depends on how far you drive and how fuel efficient your vehicle is. Here, we need to make standalone images for each of the dominant pieces of the web page. Take the header for example. Here, we could use just one big old honking image for the entire header. Bad idea. There is a slight gradient in the background of this header. So it depends on what is there if you want to cut it up into several pieces or leave it. If it's one huge complex image, it may be better to leave it as one image. 
but based on the concept of optimization, we can slice it up to single out the logo in the background so each slice is optimized. Let's cut out the logo from the rest of the header. We can't just lift out the logo, we need to slice it into sections. With the Slice Selection tool, select the header. Right click and select Divide Slice. A dialog box will appear. The top section divides the slices into horizontal segments. Make sure Preview is checked and click Divide Horizontally Into. In the first field, type 3. You should see three evenly spaced sections appear. Hit OK. Select the middle slice. Hold down the Shift key and select the bottom slice. Move this line just below the logo. Select the middle slice and the top slice. Move this line just above the logo. Finally, select just the middle slice and right click. Choose Divide Slice. Uncheck the Divide Horizontally and check the Divide Vertically, Enter 2, and hit OK. Move the center line to about here. We'll make some final adjustments later. Again, most people would be finished with the header section at this point. Not us! Click the O2 slice and right click and choose Edit Slice Options again and rename this slice to Index underscore Header underscore Logo. This final touch will make it easier to find later. At this point, I'll kick it into high speed to get through the rest of the exercise. Turn Snapping on All if it wasn't already. Select Slice 05, divide into 7 vertically. Move the cut marks close to the lines they are to cut. Move each of these lines to the right side of the gray line. Zoom in and adjust if necessary. It really doesn't matter which side of the line as long as we keep it consistent. Select 06 and rename it to index underscore nav underscore home underscore off. Select 7 and rename it to index underscore nav underscore about underscore off. You get the picture. Rename the remaining nav buttons. Don't worry about 05 or 11. Select slice 12. Divide it vertically by 2. Move the cut line to the edge of the quote box. Select slice 13. Divide it horizontally by 2. Move the cut line to the bottom of the quote box. Rename 12 to index underscore body underscore text box. And rename 13 to index underscore body underscore quote box. Now select the footer slice. Divide both horizontally and vertically by 3. It's not exactly what we want, but I want to show you how to fix this little problem. Ideally, we want the center section to be as it is in three sections, but the top and bottom sections are being cut too many times. Select the three sections across the top of the footer section. Right click and choose Combine Slices. Voila! Three into one. Now do the same for the bottom section. Rename 16 to Index underscore footer underscore copyright and 18 to index underscore footer underscore nav. A couple of last minute things that are not super important but should require some manipulating. Notice that some of the vertical lines do not line up with anything. Select 02 and 03 and move the cut line to line up with 05 and 06. Select 16 and 17. Line them up with 05 and 06 also. Now line 17 and 18 to line up with 12 and 13. Last item before saving out the slices. Go to the Layers panel. Spin open the Body Group. Double click the T icon for the text. All the text should be selected. Copy it. Now turn the eyeball off for the layer. We don't want to save out rastered text as our body copy but we do want to preserve it in case we lose the copy we just made. Now for the magic. Go to File Menu, down to Save for Web and Devices. A new dialog box appears. If it's not set to 2-up, select that now. This will show what the image looks like 
now on the left side and what it will look like after compression or after it has been <clears throat> optimized on the right side. Select the right side. Using the buttons at the bottom left of the dialog box, zoom all the way out so you can see the whole page. Click drag over the entire document. This way we select all the buttons. Zoom back out to 200%. Hold down the space bar and reposition the page so you can see the nav buttons. Under preset, choose JPEG. Click on the up and down arrows beside quality. A slider will appear below quality. Slide it all the way down. Now you can see how badly it would appear if saved this way. Look at how much banding is taking place in the header. Look at all the artifacting where there is any color change. Now let's fix it. Move the quality slider to about 85. There are still some artifacts around the color change, but it's manageable. Now before you put the postage on that hate mail, I would really go through each image and select it individually or at least by groups of images and get the best possible optimization for each. In the constraints of time, however, we select it all and are doing them all at once. Hit save to bring up yet another dialog box. Navigate to where you wish to save the information. I will select the desktop and generate a new folder called website. Under format, select HTML and images. Settings, leave it to default setting. If you're familiar with and using CSS, change this to other. Another dialog box will appear. In the output settings box, change HTML to slices and then click CSS. I'm making an HTML document. In the slices drop down, select all slices. Leave the save as index.html. Lastly, hit save. After a few seconds, this dialog box will disappear and you'll be returned to the Photoshop document. Go to the folder where you save the information. Open it. Inside you will have two items, index.html and a folder called images. Open the folder. Inside you should have many separate images. 